F-22, the most advanced fighter jet ever created in many respects, ended its production run in 2011, while the F-22 remains in service, with 187 operational airframes flying with the U.S. Air Force. No new F-22 will be built, meaning what we have is what we've got. Was ending production of the F-22 a mistake? Probably not, but it was likely irreversible. Regarding air superiority, the F-22 is probably the best aircraft ever made. The F-22 is intended to replace the F-15 Eagle, which has an undefeated track record in air-to-air -air combat. Initially, the Air Force had intended to buy 750 F-22 to create a legitimate fleet of stealth dogfighters, rendering the F-15 obsolete. But the F-22, which was first blueprinted in the 1980 and flight tested in the 1990, was of a different time. After 9-11 and the reactive invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan, the U.S. became embroiled in counter-terror and counter-insurgency operations against nations that flew obsolete and effectual fighter jets. The U.S. didn't need a fifth-generation F-22 to take down 50-year-old Iraqi MiGs. By 2011, wars were ongoing in multiple theaters, neither of which relied upon the F-22. The costly funding of F-22 production was axed. So today, while the F-22 is revered for its capabilities, only a few are operational. Now the United States faces concerns about its dwindling fleet of F-22 Raptors that were once intended to replace the F-15 outright. Only around 130 of those 186 delivered F-22 were ever operational, and today the number of combat-ready F-22 is likely in the double digits. The F-22 is not the future of the Air Force. The F-22, which have a shelf life, are still being flown regularly, meaning that the end of their service run is approaching gradually. But America needs an air superiority fighter that can stand and swing with the best in the world and as capable as the F-15EX the second of maybe. It lacks the stealth it would need to survive an open war with a nation like China or Russia. And while the U.S. is developing the sixth generation NGAD program, that product won't be ready for a decade or more. Americans' air superiority mission now runs the risk of not having the jets it needs for a high-end fight if one were to break out, as unlikely as that may be. Yet, the U.S. can't simply restart Raptor production to fill the air superiority gap. The cost to do so would be excessive. Much of the F-22 production infrastructure was converted into F-35 production infrastructure, so the plants used to build F-22 no longer exist. Is the time of Raptor over? The role of dogfighting has decreased dramatically in modern warfare, accounting for improvements in offensive and defensive technologies. A pure air superiority fighter was more foundational to Cold War doctrine than 21st century doctrine. Granted, the U.S. needs an air superiority fleet, but restarting the F-22 program on the off chance that America needs them for combat over contested airspace in Russia or China is probably not worth the investment. Open conflict with either Russia or China should be avoided at all costs, given that each nation is a nuclear power, making such an investment as egregious as restarting Raptor production to facilitate conventional war with nuclear powers is a bad investment.